Thank you. The next item of business is an urgent question. Uh, if a member wishes to request to seek a supplementary question, they should please press the request to speak button during uh, the question or by entering the letters RTS in the chat function. I call Liam Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to the Climate Change Committee's report's Progress in Reducing Emissions in Scotland 2022 report to Parliament and Scottish Emission Targets first five yearly review. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. I, I think you need to push your card in, Cabinet Secretary. Ah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, President Officer. The report from the uh, Climate Change Committee, published earlier today, was produced under the provisions of the Climate Change Scotland Act 2009, and both reports were laid in the Scottish Parliament today. I am grateful to the CCC's latest advice, uh, which makes clear the scale of the challenge in meeting the emissions reductions targets set by this Parliament. As recognised by the Committee, these targets are among the most stretching in the world, but it is right that we continually uh, act as being ambitious in looking to make sure that we take effect in reducing our emission targets overall. The provisions of the Act require Scottish Ministers to respond to the Climate Change Committee as soon as reasonably practical. Once we have considered the advice fully, I will lay a copy of the response before the Parliament as soon as possible. Liam Kerr. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Now, since the Climate Change Act referred to became law, in 2009, the Scottish Government has failed to achieve seven out of 11 interim targets. In 2018, this Government put over 200 policies and proposals into a climate change plan, which it then updated in 2020. Yet when I asked whether it had costed achieving its net zero ambitions by 2045, the Cabinet Secretary told me it hadn't and wouldn't until a new plan was published at an undisclosed point in the future. Now, I and many colleagues around this chamber have been warning this Government for years about the lack of evidence, data and financial planning. So what has the Cabinet Secretary done, both prior to this devastating report and now going forward, to ensure that its targets are realistic, backed by clear delivery plans and fully costed prior to launch? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Sign officer, I'm uh, grateful to the member for his uh, question. So uh, let me just set out in terms of the process that's already in place. So, uh, the member made reference to an unspecified timeline. The member may be aware that legally we are bound to publish an updated climate change plan by the end of next year. And that work has already started. It will set out in detail the policies which will be taken forward and also take into the account which the advice we have now received from the uh, CCC on this occasion and also demonstrate clearly the link between the policy and the outcomes it will achieve in helping to reduce overall emission levels. But the member will also be aware that the Committee on Climate Change have also been challenging governments across the whole of the UK, very similar to the report which was issued in relation to the UK Government's uh, climate change plans as well, asking for much more detail on delivery. So let me give you a practical example of looking to make sure we put those delivery mechanisms in place. So for example, we published back in October last year our our delivery or our, our building strategy for decarbonisation of domestic heating. And in the last few months, we've also published a delivery plan directly associated with that, so we can demonstrate the measures that we are going to take forward. I mean, the member asked about the overall cost of this. The overall cost of this, for example, in something to do with uh, decarbonising domestic heating, is potentially in the region of over £30 billion, some of which will come from the public purse and some of which will also come from the private sector all of which are areas that are being developed at the present moment and actions are being taken forward to deliver that. So I can ensure the member that what will take forward in delivering the new uh, updated climate plan, which we're required to do, will take into account this advice and make sure we provide the level of detail that they're looking for. Liam Kerr. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his answer and I noted the inevitable and rather predictable pivot within that answer to blaming the UK yeah. government. And the Climate Change Committee was very clear that it's this government which has the powers to take action on decarbonising buildings, transport and farming, but they have not used them. So responsibility for these failures lies squarely at their door, no matter how much the Cabinet Secretary tries to suggest otherwise. But since the Cabinet Secretary brought it up, let's examine decarbonising heat in buildings. 
Cabinet Secretary, in the context of a £2 billion underspend and the biggest financial settlement in the history of devolution, can the Cabinet Secretary tell us how cutting £37 million from the Energy Efficiency Capital Grants Budget and £45 million from the Heat and Buildings Capital Grants Budget will help achieve the targets so catastrophically missed? Cabinet Secretary. Well, President Officer, the Member might want to reflect on the comments I made. And the comments I made about the UK Government assessment by the CCC wasn't that I was blaming the UK Government. I was pointing out they issued a very similarly critical report of the UK Government strategy because of the lack of detail, which is a reflection of the approach which has been taken by the Climate Change Committee in pushing governments to be much clearer on the delivery work that they are taking forward to meet their statutory targets. And that's exactly what I've given a commitment to do. That work has already started and has been taken forward at the present at the moment. The member made reference specifically to the issue around decarbonisation of domestic premises. So there are a number of factors that are important in relation to that, one of which is the decarbonisation of our natural gas system. As yet, it is unclear because the UK government control that exactly when that is going to happen. Right? Which is, no, but it's important. No, it is an important issue which we are keen to resolve with them so we have clarity because that then informs the investments we make in helping to support the decarbonisation of people's domestic heating systems. So we need to have that alignment. And as the member will recognise, one of the key recommendations that came from this report is the need for greater cooperation between the UK government and the Scottish government. And that's why we have been asking for clarity on this, so we can ensure that the £1.8 billion that we are investing in this parliamentary term alone, which is record investment into decarbonising domestic premises, is used in the most efficient, effective way, which is why we need clarity on when we are going to switch our natural gas energy system. That type of approach allows us to make the right informed decisions and to ensure that we are making the progress that I am sure the member wants to make and that we want to make in reducing our overall greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, before I call sup any supplementary uh, speaker, can I just say we have now spent six minutes, 53 seconds on three questions and answers. I have actually received a number of requests for supplementaries. Um, whether I manage to take many of them is entirely dependent on there being brief one question questions and brief answers to match. Colin Smith, supplementary, please. President Officer, this report is utterly damning. Progress is stalled. Seven out of eleven legal targets missed. A plea made a year ago for clarity and transparency has gone completely unanswered by the government. Let's just take one of many examples of failure transport. The Climate Change Committee say we will need 24,000 public charging points by 2030 for electric vehicles. The Cabinet Secretary is proposing just over 4,000 in total in the next few years. So does the Cabinet Secretary and this government even have a target for 2030, the day it says it will transition to 100 per cent electric car and van sales? And when will it set out a clear plan to meet that target for public EV charging points? Thank you. Briefly, Cabinet Secretary. I'm, officer, I'm sure the member will also recognise that the Committee on Climate Change have acknowledged that Scotland has got one of the most extensive public charge EV charging infrastructures in the whole of the UK, with the exception of uh, central London. And as we've set out, we're investing over £60 million. Pounds. Uh, £30 million pounds from the Scottish Government, £30 million pounds of private sector investment to extend the EV charging network even further in Scotland to make sure that we build on the good progress we've been making in recent years. And Fiona Hislop, supplementary briefly, please. Uh, this is a hard critical report assessing performance against hard targets set under pressure from and supported by all political parties in this Parliament. Can the Scottish Government also set out which key priority decisions in reserved areas by the UK Government to reduce emissions in Scotland, together with its own required improvements in delivery, are needed to address the Climate Change Committee's concerns? Briefly, Cabinet Secretary, please. So, officer, I can think of three immediate areas that we need clarity on, urgent clarity on. One is in relation to carbon capture, utilisation and storage. The ACORN project, which needs to progress urgently, uh, not only is a significant investment going into that now, it is mission critical to meet our climate change targets here by 2030 uh, and also for the UK. So no more dithering from the UK government on this matter is acceptable. We also need to see further investment into areas in terms of helping to support the uh, helping to support the make sure, to make sure that we have in place uh, systems that can help to roll out our renewable energy programme much more effectively, which is why we need to see 
see reform of the consenting regime, a key part of which is reserved to the UK uh, Government, and why we also uh, need to make sure that we see changes being made to the way in which there are regulatory costs being applied to aspects of our renewables, which are acting as an inhibitor to further development. Supplementary, Liam MacArthur, briefly, please. Thank you. Well, the promises may be world leading. The report exposes glaring gaps in plans uh, and progress being jeopardised by ministers' failure to cooperate at a UK level or to give local councils a fair deal. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, in light of the CCC stating aviation policy quote, runs counter to targets, whether the SNP Green Government will now revisit its support for Heathrow expansion? Briefly, Cabinet Secretary, please. And also, we are developing an aviation strategy which will look at both uh, domestic and international aviation, which will be published next year, will set out our approach to aviation policy. And supplementary, Mark Ruskell, briefly, please. In the last session of Parliament, four parliamentary committees raised serious concerns that the climate change plan was not fit for purpose. So it was good to hear the UK CCC finally reflect many of those concerns in their report today. Um, undoubtedly, the new climate change plan must do better. So will the Cabinet Secretary accept that we urgently need to drive down the growth in aviation mileage and that no options should be off the table to do that? Cabinet Secretary, briefly, please. I'm saying, officer, issues relating to aviation will be covered within the aviation strategy, which I just made uh, reference to. And I can give the member an assurance that the climate change update plan, which we've already started work on, which will be uh, published next year uh, in draft form, uh, will make a much clearer link between uh, policy and delivery outcomes and how that will impact on our climate change policy overall. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes the urgent question. Uh, apologies to those members who I was not able to call for the reasons that I made quite clear. Uh, a wee bit earlier. Uh, there will be a short pause before we move on to the next item of business to allow frontbench teams to change positions should they wish. Thank you.